G'day, how you going? The weather's getting cool. Woohoo! That means one thing hunting. Well, for us guys that like to go hunting with our dogs. So, this is a video for people with hunting dogs. I want to share with you nine mistakes that I've made. Number one, hunting when it's too hot. A real dumb one. It cost me a really good dog about two and a half years ago. If it's too hot, your dog will still hunt for you, but it will cook itself. Just don't bloody do it. And even if it doesn't die, It'll fry its internal organs, particularly its kidneys, and it'll never be the same again. That's a no-no. Uh, number two, stop proofing. Incorrectly, we all have to stop proof our dogs. That means teach them how to not hit the non-target species like goats and possums and sheep. If you give your dog a hiding when it catches a goat, you pick up a stick and you beat it and sees you're angry, you might get lucky and you might stop proof it, but you might also teach it that it shouldn't do a goat or a sheep when its master's around, but when it's 500 metres away from you, it's not going to get a hiding. And you won't know what your dog's done when it's that far away. Much better to use a hot collar, that way it equates the bad deed, or at least the non-target species, with getting a shot from that animal. It doesn't know you've done it. I use my Garmin handheld Alpha for doing the control work, and I use a tracking collar for training. This one's just a vibrate only. I've also got ones that have electricity, but I don't use them on my small dogs. If you are going to use a hot collar, then stick it on your leg first and give yourself a zap. See what it feels like before you deal out to your dog. And if you can't do that, then you're a pussy and you shouldn't be pig hunting anyway. Right, this one's going to be set to vibrate. We're going to try choppy on the sheep. See how he goes. He doesn't like vibrate. Oh, vibrate, it feels like a phone going off. It's nothing too harsh on the dog, so if you're worried about hurting a dog, it doesn't. It just irrit irritates it. There we go. And zap. Yeah, that worked. Sheep gave him a bun at the same time. Mate, is he going to go back to it? Let's see if he goes back again. If he does, here we go, again. Didn't like that, did you, mate, eh? It's only a bit of vibration. He's now not wanting to go back again. He's not sure about that because it gave him a bit of vibration. Right, eh? Uh, number three, too much brisket bone. We all feed our dogs brisket bone from time to time, but the vets will tell you that brisket bone is the number one cause to blockage in the stomach. And I had this years ago with a dog called Jim, and it cost me a night in the bush and a $1,200 vet bill. I've got a video about that. I'll put it below. Give your dog one or two brisket bones, great for the teeth, but don't overfeed them brisket. All right, number four, called the dog and told off. Here's a classic, man, and I did this when I was a young man. I'll never do it again. You call your dog and then you tell it off. That teaches your dog, if it comes, it gets a hiding. You see people do it, never tell your dog off when you call it, no matter how pissed off or angry you are, otherwise you're going to end up with a dog that won't come. Five, now, a while ago I gave Bruno a bit of chunky dog roll and I didn't chop it up, and if I had not been there, he would have choked to death on it, and I had been told not to do this. It's not the dog roll manufacturer's fault, it's our fault. Dog roll's got to be chopped up because it is a processed product, and a dog cannot always process it. It'll get its mouth, but it's not like a piece of meat, it's a different substance, so chop up your dog roll. Uh, number six, run too young. Okay, why? Well, particularly with uh, larger breeds, but the crucial ligament in a dog is like that. It's like two bits, and they roll in each other and you'll snap that piece of bone off if you run your dog too young. What's too young? Well, it depends on the breed. If you had a Mastiff dog, you wouldn't want to run it until it's a year old because its soft ends are still growing. If you have a, like a Whippet breed or a Jack Russell or a bit of working dog, you might get away with running it at six months, but there's always that risk, and I've seen it, and I've even done it and stuffed it up. The operation costs about three grand to fix it, and it never really fixes it. Okay, uh, number seven. We've all done it. Run with dogs outside of my own pack. You go with your mate and his dogs, and what happens? His dog jumps on a bloody goat. What is your dog going to do? It's going to jump on it too. Unless you really know your mate's dogs, just stick to your own pack because dogs will pack together and do bad shit because that's what dogs do. Righto, number eight, raise siblings together. My dad always said, don't raise two pups together. Well, I tried raising three, and dad was completely right. What do they do? They all pack together, and they don't listen to you. You'll have a hell of a hard time training two dogs together if they are pups, particularly siblings, because they will bond, and they won't bond to you. Righto, last one is uh, over hunting, and man, I've done a heap of that, and found out, and that board's going to just about fall over. But really, you know, over hunting, particularly in the winter when we're going out every day, your dog is running about, for every kilometre you do, it's doing about 10 to 15 kilometres. It will do it, but you know, in the wild, wolves would hunt, make their kill, 
feast up on it and they park up. They don't hunt the next day and the next day and the next day. And if they are hunting the next day and the next day and the next day, they're doing it on an empty stomach and they're in ketosis. Two days in a row, fine. Three pushing it. If you're going away on a mission, like for a week, which we do, then take two packs, like two of two, and run them and alternate. Okay, that's my mistakes that I made. Good luck this uh, winter if you're in New Zealand, if you're on the other side of the world. Stay in the cool and uh, be good. If you can't be good, be careful. Right, we're going to take the big fella for a walk. Come on, Bruno. Come on, mate. You just want to hang out there, do you? He'll stay loyal if you're rich or poor. Ugly as sin and you fart and snore. And that's why we call dog man's best friend. That's why we call dog a man's best friend. That's why we call dog a man's best friend.